There's an old Broadway saying that goes, you can't make a living, but you can make a killing. But when a show appears to be on the verge of flopping, sometimes it kills its leading lady. When the musical revival of Funny Girl opened at the August Wilson Theater, actress Beanie Feldstein stepped into the starring role. But just four months and a handful of scathing reviews later, Feldstein prematurely took her final bow. And just weeks later, the production announced her replacement, actress Leah Michelle. According to Variety, the average ticket during Feldstein's run sold for about $100. Michelle's opening week charged $2,500 for the best seats in the house and $570 for the worst. Casting strong leads isn't the only thing that can make or break a show's financial success. So what goes into producing a Broadway hit? And are Broadway shows really as profitable as they appear? Theatrical performances have been happening on Broadway in New York City since before the Revolutionary War. You know, that one from Hamilton. Today, Broadway encompasses 41 theaters in Midtown Manhattan, each with 500 seats or more. Pre-COVID, Broadway grossed nearly $2 billion during the 2018-2019 season. Variety called it a new golden age. Then COVID hit, dimming Broadway's lights for a full 18 months. And since its reopening in September 2021, profits have barely scraped the $1 billion mark. There are lots of different ways to be part of the business of Broadway and lots of different ways to make or lose money. This is Dr. Derek Miller, a professor, theater historian, and principal investigator of the Visualizing Broadway Project. Broadway is just complex enough to be totally fascinating and just small enough to be at least feel a little graspable, a little bit like one can actually sort of get one's arms around it. To understand how Broadway has endured crises like COVID and the Great Depression, you have to understand how it makes money. On-Broadway productions kick off like any other business, with money from investors. They typically give producers between $25,000 and $50,000 each to cover a show's upfront costs. For musicals, that number is about $10 to $20 million, or $70 million if you're Spider-Man. Then comes sorting out the weekly production budget. The biggest costs are salaries and theater expenses. Keep in mind, most shows run six days a week with only one dark day. You almost never see shows performing on Mondays, but some shows have started to change that. They're saying, hey, look, we don't have any competition. Maybe Monday's a good night to try to run this production. We can catch a certain kind of audience. During Broadway's golden age season, audience numbers peaked at nearly 14.8 million people, a dream for theater owners. They take home five to 7% of the weekly box office gross, plus an additional flat fee of 10 to $20,000. According to Variety, Leah Michelle's opening week of Funny Girl grossed $2 million, breaking box office records for the August Wilson Theater. But what about when a show underperforms? To protect themselves financially, theater owners and producers usually set up something called a stop clause. The stop clause fundamentally protects the producers from being evicted as long as they're running above the stop clause. The theater says, if you don't make X amount of the box office potential for two weeks in a row, then we can throw you out. When Beetlejuice the musical reportedly failed to meet its ticket revenue quota for two consecutive weeks in 2019, it was evicted from the Winter Garden Theater. Its replacement, The Music Man, starring A-list actor Hugh Jackman. According to Broadway producer Ken Davenport, only 20% of producers and investors recoup the money they invest in a show. And Funny Girl just might make the cut before it closes this September. Even rarer are the breakout successes of new musicals like Hamilton. The New York Times reported that it cost $12.5 million up front to produce the show. Less than a year into its run, it had fully recouped every penny. The biggest piece of the recouping equation is ticket sales. The goal is to sell enough tickets at a high enough price to exceed the weekly operating costs of production. Shows today use something called dynamic pricing, which means they adjust the price for almost every seat in the house based on demand, a tactic also used by airlines. So uh, fundamentally what producers need to understand is the relationship between what it's gonna cost them weekly to perform the show and the potential income they can earn at the theater. In Leah Michelle's case, 
that number is still in the high 200s and could go even higher as the show nears close, which is most likely why she's the face of Funny Girl. Shows change stars for all kinds of reasons. The number one reason is that the star is not doing this thing a star should do, which is to attract audiences to a production. And like that other Broadway saying goes, that's showbiz. Give us a standing ovation by hitting that subscribe button. For an encore, check out the Hustle Daily newsletter at thehustle.co for all the latest business and tech news delivered right to your inbox.